The year is March 3rd, 2005, and you've been a father for the past 39 years. But the thing is, the child isn't yours. Its mother was shot and killed back in Tanzania, right in front of you. So from the guilt of witnessing this horrific event, you take it upon yourself to raise this creature as your own. But here you are now on March 3rd, celebrating his 39th birthday. After having custody taken away from you, the time you can spend with him is sparse. Your son Mo blows out his candles, but from the distance, you can hear the vicious cries of chimps running your way. And before you know it, one of them has managed to push you to the ground and is now on top of you, bashing your face in. This is the story of St. James Davis and how adopting this baby chimpanzee led to one of the most brutal attacks ever documented. Hey everyone, it's Wildman, and in today's video, we're going to be diving into the disturbing case of St. James Davis. And to truly understand the events that led up to this disturbing attack, we need to go back to when James and Mo first met. But before we begin, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and liking the video as that would help me out a lot. Also, please check out the description for disclaimers as this case is pretty brutal. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Our story begins in 1967 with St. James taking an expedition to Tanzania where he takes witness to poachers killing a mother chimp, leaving her son an orphan. So James, after witnessing this horrific event, took it upon himself to care for this chimp and ended up even bringing him back to the United States, specifically the Bakersfield, California area. But as time went on, James continued to care for this chimp and eventually got married to a woman named LaDonna. However, the two were unable to conceive a child together which made both of them pretty sad, but James told his wife that they already had a child and to treat Mo as such. And this eventually led to the couple treating Mo as a human child, dressing him in clothes, giving him showers, and even teaching Mo how to use the toilet. And it's pretty safe to say that Mo was pretty pampered and was being treated by a prince by both of his parents. The connection that Davis felt to Mo was incredibly strong. However, something happened in 1997 that would cause a ripple effect that would eventually lead James one step closer to this brutal attack. In 1977, Mo was now 10 years old and they had someone visit him and that person put their fingers in the cage even though Davis specifically told them not to. And because the woman didn't listen, Mo grabbed her hand and bit her. The woman went on to file a lawsuit, however, it was dismissed. Ten years would pass until Moe's next slip-up, because one day the 20-year-old chimp escaped his parents' home and roamed the streets of Bakersfield. Police were called, but the chimp was resisting their attempts to restrain him. Moe was banging and climbing on police cars, even going as far to maul one of the police officer's hands. Moe was clearly in distress, being so far away from his home, and didn't know how to handle this situation. And on top of that, the officers that were called to the scene didn't know how to handle the situation either, so it kind of created this chaotic event. But eventually they were able to capture Mo by tranquilizing him and he was returned home. And surprisingly after this incident Mo was still allowed to live with his parents. He wasn't forced to go to a animal sanctuary just yet. But a year later a woman would visit Mo's cage and she stuck her hand in just like the woman before. However this time it was a lot more serious because Mo grabbed the woman's hand and bit her finger completely off. Mistaking it for one of his favorite snacks which were also red and the woman's fingers were painted red so that's why he ended up biting her finger off. This was the final straw which ended in a lawsuit that the Davises settled. On top of that the custody was revoked from the Davises and they were forced to send Mo to an animal sanctuary where he would be monitored 24-7. The Davises were able to move close to the animal sanctuary so it did allow them to visit Mo pretty frequently. And the years went by like this, the Davises visiting Mo whenever they could. It was now 2005 and Mo was now turning 39 years old. The Davises decided to drive up and celebrate Mo's 39th birthday. And Mo as always was ecstatic to see his parents jumping up and down and clapping in joy. But as the couple were on the grass enjoying their birthday cake with their son Mo, two chimps broke free from their cage and ran straight to the couple. First they went for LaDonna, 
jumping on top of her and biting her thumb completely off. James rushed in and was able to push them off of her, and LaDonna was able to hide under a table, but the chimps weren't finished and went after James now. They lunged on top of him and began to bash his face in. The two chimps involved, named Buddy and Ollie, began to bite his nose off, chew his fingers, and gouged his right eye completely out. The attack was extremely brutal and unfortunately went on for five minutes straight. That was before the sanctuary's owner's son-in-law ran to the scene and shot both chimps dead. And when James was rushed into the hospital by paramedics, they couldn't believe the sheer brutality of this attack to James. And according to the paramedics, it looked a lot more like a grizzly bear attack than anything they thought a chimp was even remotely capable of. I had no idea a chimpanzee was capable of doing that to a human, said Kern County Fire Captain Kurt Morell, who was among the first on the scene. And according to his wife LaDonna, he lost every single finger on both of his hands. He lost an eye, part of his nose, cheek and lips, a part of his buttocks, and his foot was mutilated and his heel bone was cracked. And as for the whereabouts of their son Mo during this attack, he had simply just ran away. As for James, he spent six months in the hospital, surgery after surgery. From 2005 to 2009, he went through around 60 surgeries. And after James had made a recovery, James and LaDonna would continue to visit Mo in the animal sanctuary. However, in the summer of 2008, three years after the brutal attack, Mo mysteriously just vanished. The owners of the sanctuary told the Davises that Mo had snuck out of his cage and ran away. And the Davises were very heartbroken because they had been caring for this chimp like his son for the past 42 years. But years passed and Mo was just never found. However, there is a lot of speculation as to what really happened to Mo the chimp. Because for him to just escape from his cage and never to be found, even though there were search parties looking for him, just sounds very suspicious. So a lot of people speculate that Mo was killed in the animal sanctuary either by an employee or perhaps either another chimp, but it was covered up. Either that or someone at the animal sanctuary sold Mo to someone. Regardless, this case is extremely heartbreaking because of the damage this situation caused. A man was mauled, a family was torn apart, two chimps were killed, and Mo, who vanished without a trace. My heart truly goes out to the Davis family. But yeah, that's pretty much everything. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe as well as liking the video and check out my channel memberships. It's only $1.99. You get early access to videos as well as custom emojis. Huge thank you to my ultimate tiers, Kpop Lover X3 and Night98. But yeah, thank you so much for spending some time with me. It's always super great. Please stay safe. Take care of yourselves. And uh, yeah, I'll see you later. Love ya. And his encounter with this asleep fairy that lures him out of his home in the middle of the night. And what happens after Caleb follows this supposed sleep fairy is just truly nightmare.